Hello everyone. Happy early Easter. I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I hope tomorrow is amazing for you too. Um, I'm so excited for this week's Trader Joe's taste test. There's a lot of sweet treats in this one. Um, there are some savory squares that look good too, but we're going to start it off with a cinnamon Danish. So you don't want to miss this week's episode. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below. Let's get right into this week's Trader Joe's taste test. As promised, we got our cinnamon twist danish right here. I did heat this up in the microwave. I know it says to bake, but I didn't want to bake the whole thing. And I just wanted to do it quick, but I did 20 seconds for two small pieces for Tim and I. Um, I was just gonna eat it with my hands. And, and it says, <laughs> and it says it's optional to heat it up, but you come on, you gotta, you gotta heat, heat it up. up. This looks so good. You can see the layers in it. Mm. That's like a cinnamon roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I think it does have a custard style filling. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of that. I would like a little bit more of the icing or frosting or whatever filling this is but or custard filling um but the cinnamon flavor is strong it is it's good the texture is throwing me off a bit it just doesn't taste fully cooked um and because the, the heating up is optional it would lead me to believe that it is already fully cooked but it's quite gooey just yeah. has like maybe not my favorite texture so it does taste like the dough hasn't quite cooked um, and I've made cinnamon rolls before where I, that has happened and they're like inedible because they're just like, almost like wet, you know? And so I'm getting kind of a little bit of that vibe and I didn't even cut into the middle yet. So I don't know. Let me know if you guys have tried this and if you feel like yours is undercooked too, or if it's just the filling that's like kind of making it feel a little more gooey. It, it's definitely soft. Uh -huh. I, I would say keep eating it because I don't think it's gooey. I don't. I know what, exactly what you're talking about yeah. when a cinnamon roll isn't cooked all the way and it's almost like, oh, I can't do it. Um, but this one, it's it, it has a little bit of that soft. It's a very moist texture to it for it's like sure. Chewy. Um, and I think perhaps if you were to buy this, like let's say for example for tomorrow for Easter, and you want to bring it to a party and. You throw the whole thing into the oven and you cook it for the three to five minutes that it says that maybe that would um, evaporate some of the moisture yeah. and, and maybe it would would take that away um, I personally don't didn't experience what you did so I don't think it's gooey for me I think the texture is quite nice I think it's it's nice and moist but also um, it, it isn't like too much yeah. um, but it's just like very cinnamony so if I, maybe mm -hmm. if it, in the middle it'd be, it'd be different, but I would like to have frosting on this to make it more like a traditional cinnamon roll. Okay. I do really like the flavor of it. I think it tastes really good. Um, I'm a big cinnamon fan, so I do like that. I just, there's something about it near the center. Like I kind of, the rest of that I ate was more like toward the outside. So it's, it was much more of a drier consistency. Um, but I do think that I, I just... I don't know I can't get past that and if it's more gooey in the middle and like that wet I, I that's not that is not my style so uh, for nine dollars I don't know maybe maybe it's a little overpriced but I think it definitely is big which it is, is why I think it justifies yeah. the, the price we took the smallest little sliver it was a pretty good all. sliver. It was like okay. that size, okay? <laughs> all right, but I'm saying like this thing is like that. Yeah. So um, it, I'm satisfied. I'm show them actually what it looks like, the size. Yeah, I'm satisfied with how much I had and look how much left there is. Yeah, so you can see. Um, there's quite a bit, of, a bit in the middle. So I don't know. I'm just, I just have that little bit of a concern, whoa, of the gooiness. But if we bake it and it does dry it out a bit, then that's probably great. So if you are experiencing the same thing and you bake it, let me know. And let me know if, if you notice that it's like dries up the center a little bit. Um, otherwise, I think it's really good. It tastes really great. Would I buy it again? No, it's too expensive for me. Um, I like the cinnamon rolls that Trader Joe's sells in the refrigerator that you can make five out of. And they're like personal size. They're even like pretty large. So that's what I would go for. Um, and it does have the frosting in there. So I know yeah. Tim likes that. But it is good. It tastes good. I don't know. I'm just not like wowed by it. That's all. 
Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Let's move on to something that's a little bit more savory. Do you yeah. want to try these cheddar savory squares? Yeah, so these are the vegan cheddar style. So they're not real cheddar in here. And then it's nut and seed flour. They're gluten-free as well. Um, I think we should maybe try the beer with this though. Interesting, okay. Yeah, what we do can think? do that. I mean, I need something to sip on, so that's All a right. great idea. So you wanna get the beer going while I Absolutely. get the crackers going? So this beer here is called Metamorphosis by Mother Earth Brewing Company. And this is a hazy IPA with this beautiful can uh, with these butterflies on it. Look at how many crackers are in this box. <laughs> it always cracks me up when there's like such a big package and I know that they allot some air to prevent like the crackers from breaking and stuff like that. That's that's why I do it. It just sometimes seems a little extreme with the size difference. Um, okay, so we're gonna try the crack. Ooh, these smell like cheese it. Oh, I was gonna say the beer I, smells good. They look good. like cheese it actually too. Mm. A little on the drier side of the cheese it's but these are they smell a lot like cheese it's. It's weird. Isn't it? It's like a goldfish. No, cheese it for sure. Goldfish. Cheese it. Goldfish. Cheese it. <laughs> <laughs> We're children. Ooh, those are good. Those actually those are, are good. Decent. I like that. Now, those. it does have. Yum. It does have like a flowery flavor to it, or I can't put my finger on it exactly. It isn't real cheddar, right? Mm, it's a vegan, vegan. cheddar. So it's probably that it, it tastes really close to like a real mm. cheese. So I'll say they did a good job. But um, if you got to be critical, you can certainly tell that it's not a real cheese. But well, it's tapioca good flour and almond flour. That's probably what you're tasting in the flour oh, department. Okay. Um, for the cheese, they just added a bunch of different like paprika, uh, salt, onion powder, a bunch of different seasonings to get this flavor. I'm actually surprised that there's no nutritional yeast in here. Wait, there's yeast extract. Maybe that's nutritional yeast. I don't know. Anyway, these are really delicious. I actually really like these. I like that they're really dense and compact. So when you bite into it, it's not like flaky. You're not getting a lot of air. You're getting actually like a good chew on this. I, I think that the ingredient list looks pretty good to me. Um, there is natural flavor in there. There is sunflower oil and but there's some other uh, flowers in here that makes it gluten free. And I just feel like I really enjoy these. I think they have a good flavor. So I don't know. Tim, does, Tim you don't like them too much or? You I, I think they're fine. Um, you know, they're, they're, like I said, they taste to me like either goldfish or Cheez-Its. <laughs> um, and so I really like that this is available for vegans, for those with gluten uh, intolerances. And it's, it's just great. So I think everybody can have it. It's a good cracker. Um, I would like to have you know, it's kind of sacrilege, but I like to put cheese on it um, and like use <laughs> it like on a charcuterie board or something like that. Um, but uh, you know, I think it's I think it's a good product. As is, I think they're good. So, yes. all right, let's uh, get into this hazy IPA. Absolutely. Mmm, that wow. is that's good. <laughs> that's really good. This yeah. is such a crisp, fruity almost. Very fruity beer. Um, has a lot of good flavor. It does have a little bit of that hoppiness at the end. 7.2. It's 7.2% alcohol, it's which so is good. which is really good. This this tastes really good. I was expecting it to be like four. Really? I mean, it's an IPA. Yeah, but it's a good flavor though. Is really there such good flavor. thing as an IPA at a four? I don't know. I don't think I so. Don't know. <laughs> um, I do. I just think this is like an easy to sip beer. I'm glad I got two. Yeah, me too. Because. These are um, these are just nice to have on the weekend. Sometimes Tim likes to have some beer with the neighbor, and he um, likes to go for these fun ones that we pick up. So when I get an extra can, he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go over to my friend's house and <laughs> crack open the beer." So um, I do think this is like just like an easy sipping, really nice, almost like has like a lightness to it. It's not like a very heavy tasting beer, but it's not real crisp, really refreshing. I think it's. Uh, for me, 10 out of 10. I really mm, like it. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't disagree. I think 10 out of 10 is not really that much of a stretch. Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, pretty, pretty difficult to get a 10 out of 10 for me, but I will give it a 9.2 out of 10 for sure. It's a good one. <laughs> All right. We are moving on. As promised, we are going to try the lemon juice. I just want to let you guys know if it tastes synthetic or not. Um, so I'm not going to taste very much. I just want to get... a swig or what are we doing? Yeah. I think I'm just going to like 
put a little in the cap and then dip my finger in it. Okay. I don't want to like ruin my teeth or anything, you know, but I want to give it a good fair shot to let people know if it tastes like it's a synthetic or if it tastes I, more natural. It should be natural since it's 100%. Literally all that's in here is organic lemon juice. No, it definitely tastes... You're... Am I crazy? Yeah, that's <laughs> sour. I'm gonna do it. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. Woo, woo. So it's definitely sour. <laughs> it's lemon Yeah, juice, I mean, come on. I, no, no, I don't think it's, I mean, I don't know how it could be synthetic if there's nothing else other than lemon juice in it. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I guess so. It, it, they use, well, I guess they don't have any preservatives in this, which is weird. Um, How do they keep it without, I don't know. So it's did lemon it taste juice, like so lemon it's... juice to you? Yep. Okay. It tasted like lemon juice to me, but not like a fresh squeezed lemon. Um, no, this is a different kind of lemon too. I think. Yeah. It, and it's from Sicilian yeah, lemon juice. Yeah. So it's from Sicily. It's, you know, it does have a little bit of a different flavor than just regular lemons, but tastes like lemon juice to me. I mean, I yeah. don't know what else to say. Okay. It is a good alternative. So if you are somebody that's in the market for for lemon juice in a bottle because you don't have access to lemons to freshly squeeze them or you just don't care to do that, this is a good option. Um, and like Tim said, I'm actually kind of surprised now seeing this ingredient list, it's just organic lemon juice and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have a synthetic flavor. Um, but you never know, even if it does have just like a pure, sometimes it still tastes weird, but this one tastes fine. So it tastes fine to me. Yeah. He took a whole shot of it. So <laughs> <laughs> trust him on this one. Um, okay. We're going to move on to some sweets now. I mean, we started with sweets. We're ending with sweets, of course, but we have this brown sugar boba mochi. And then we also have the vanilla cookie thins, which I think we should start with the cookie thins. Okay. This is nice. It comes in two sleeves. So the other one doesn't have to get stale if you can't eat them as fast, which is going to be us. You know, I really like your idea of using these for like little mini ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. I, like I haven't tried these yet, but I can only imagine the that that little size, bit right? of, yeah, and that little bit of vanilla would add, add to the, the flavor of the ice cream, but let's try out and see how they are. Oh, these are good. These are a lot more like vanilla flavored than I thought they'd be. I like vanilla wafers. Yeah, they're like cookies, honestly. Yeah. yeah, well, they are. They're cookie thin, honey. Oh, well. <laughs> um, uh. Wow, and you can have nine cookies for a serving size. Wow, that's, that's a good. lot. Uh, these are great. I like how thin they are. They're really crispy. I do believe these would be great for uh, ice cream sandwiches Absolutely. after trying them because they're so crispy. They'll hold up. They might get soft after the ice cream's kind of sat on them a little bit, but... I feel like the crispiness is needed for an ice cream sandwich cookie so that when it does absorb some of that moisture, it doesn't just disintegrate, it'll still stay together. Um, yeah. But it has a great vanilla flavor. I really like this flavor a lot. Yeah, I do And too. I, the crispiness is just like really nice. I like I like that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at like what, 14 calories each, it's like a nice little uh, sugar boost and it, it has, it has, like I said, a lot more vanilla flavor than I was expecting. So uh, I feel like I got to satisfy my sweet tooth without having any guilt for it. So um, that's a nice little treat. Okay, Math King. 14 <laughs> calories per. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's that right. <laughs> I don't know if it's right, but yeah. Okay, I thought you were being like, oh, I'm just sitting here minding my business and know I, all my math. <laughs> I think that would make it 116 instead of 120. So I think. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not the math queen. <laughs> he's, he's good at math, not me. Um, okay, we're moving on. The last food item we are trying is the brown sugar boba mochi. So we're gonna try that. And in the haul, I was like, I think these come in individual bags because it sounds like it. And then I'm so silly, it's clear on the bottom. <laughs> so in fact, they are uh, in individual bags because I can see it on the bottom if I would have just looked through the whole bag. Um, whoops. Fumble. Yeah, I know. We're also going to be trying this new Rock Station Chardonnay. That's going to also be happening very shortly. Are you going to pour it for us? Yeah, I'll pour it while you're doing that. Um, but yeah, this is kind of nice that it comes in separate bags because I imagine these get kind of, you know, um, oh, they're, they're big. I, what were you thinking? I, were th I was thinking they were like small little bobas. Oh, no. I think the boba is in the middle, and then they made this little mochi, the mochi thing around, around it. it. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. 
That's so interesting. So I'm I'm assuming they individually wrap these because they would all stick together and become like one yeah, big Yeah, probably clump. be pretty gross. Um, as much as we all hate to see the individual packaging and things like this, there is probably a purpose for this one because you don't want your food to get ruined. Um, so, oh, this one's a lot smaller. I'll go for the smaller one. Okay, so we're going to open the bag and, oh my gosh, I want to play with oh, this. I know, I'm going to say it's so soft <laughs> and gooey. This is like little Play-Doh piece. Oh, man. Oh my God, Vincent's all curious. Don't play with your food. This is fun. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's yeah. weird. It's kind of nice. <laughs> I don't right. know if I want to put it in my mouth, though. Now you're going to. It now reminds they got your, me of Play-Doh too much. Now they okay. got your fingers all, all right. over I'm not. I'm taking a bite. Ugh. I'm sorry, that is not for me. That oh. is not for me. <laughs> it, it started off all right, and then and then it just kind of went downhill. Um, what, I, what what flavor is that? Because it was kind of like chalk. <laughs> Outer? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was almost like it almost tasted like flour. Like like I know it's outside it has flour on Gosh, it. Gosh, that is but, just. The inside, I, I bit into it. The inside has some like creamy that, stuff in there. Oh yeah, I don't know what that and is. And then it looks like some apricot jam or something in the middle. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I was I was open to it. I gave it a full shot, but um, I I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not into it. Yeah, this is a no times no for me. <laughs> no I <swear. laughs> first of all, we already know I'm not a mochi person. I don't like mochi. The texture for me is just too. It's not the flavor, it's the texture. It's just too soft and gooey. This texture is, whoo, it's like chewing Play-Doh. I'm not kidding. Chewing Play-Doh mixed with Silly Putty. It's like sticky Play-Doh. Yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, the flavor, I, I just, I don't understand it. I do not understand it. If you guys like mochi and you like the flavor of powder, <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I don't know. There's somebody out there that's okay. probably going to really me, like it. Me, and that's cool. Over. I'm so glad that there's this product for you. But for me, never again. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me take it from here. So let's address the brown sugar. I didn't taste any brown sugar. Did you? No. Yeah. No. I, I don't feel like there was any brown sugar flavor, maybe the slightest hint of it. And it being the first two words on the packaging of brown sugar, boba mochi. Okay. Now, I know we're probably not going to be of a popular opinion here because people love boba. Yeah. And we have not been boba fans. We've tried it in the past, and it just hasn't been something that we're big fans of. So, yeah, but I didn't even get boba in this, really. I know. Did you? I didn't either. I was actually feeling for it, and yeah, I didn't really like, get much. Yeah, I, I know that they're tr like the center is supposed to be like the boba, but... It's not like boba because boba is like slimy and has like that chewy, chew, chewy, chewy to it. Yeah, this I think it not. becomes like more of like the mochi than its own tapioca ball. Yeah, I really couldn't get past the texture and then that powdery taste that kind of just coats your mouth and you just, it, it's like powdered sugar, I think is what it is, but it, it's. Yeah. We can move on. Yeah. We can move on. We'll move on to this uh, white wine here. This is the Rock Station Chardonnay yes. from Napa Valley, 2022. I'm excited for this. Cheers, I hope son. it's good. Mm. That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. It has a good smell to it. You know, we don't drink white wine very often, so I got to kind of put myself in that mindset. Uh, it, it does have a little bit of a sweetness, but it's not super sweet. Yeah, and, it, and I was going to say... Sometimes Chardonnays can have a lot of acidity to it. At least I can taste kind of like the back end. It kind of like has that burned down your throat. No, this is not. not. This is a buttery Chardonnay. I would say like a little bit more on the buttery side. And it does have like when you first initially take the sip, you're getting like a nice light citrusy taste. And then at the back end, you're getting like more of that buttery kind of coats your mouth that buttery taste and it's really nice i think this is a good bottle of wine you like it i do you know i'm like i'm not really sure i like it um it, it's it's all right Ooh, the first i sip, really like it i, I like the, the flavor right on the beginning right on your tongue at the beginning but the aftertaste kind of makes me feel like mm, you don't like the butter i guess not taste it again I the did. more you sip i feel like the better it gets it's kind of like desensitizing your tongue with wine, you know? Yeah, it's okay. I mean... Really? Well, you're not a big... I My parents love Chardonnay, so I grew up, <laughs> obviously, after 21. 
Um, and that's true because I didn't drink until I was 21. But um, they started, you know, I would have a glass of wine with them here and there. And it was always Chardonnay. And they kind of taught me what they liked and I liked it too. And I feel like this one is just like a really good, easy to sip on Chardonnay. It tastes, uh, there's a lot of levels to it, a lot of different flavor profiles going on in there. And I like that. I think it has like a nice, smooth finish and it's easy to drink. So I think it's great. Good. Do you want to try the cab of this same brand? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think if you like this and you think this is a good quality, then yeah. we can certainly try something that I'm more accustomed yeah. to having and we can get okay. an honest answer from me then. Okay. All right. That's fair. Um, well, that's it. We tried it all. We won some, we lost some. <laughs> there was some good things and there were some bad, but I will say the majority of it was good. Um, I guess I'm just more in a picky mood today, but I really liked these crackers. I think for me, these are my favorite thing that, that we got this week. I do think that these cookie thins too are really good. Those were good. And you guys that have tried the cookie thins before, you already know the texture and the consistency of these because there's other flavors that the Trader Joe's has and they're the exact same cookie. So it's not a surprise there, but the flavor is really nice and tastes like real vanilla. So that's it. We have a question for the week. Yeah, you want me to ask it? Yeah. I have one I just thought of. Is oh, that, okay. <laughs> um, everybody here is watching us on YouTube. So I'm curious. What is your, what's your tradition? How, how do you watch YouTube? What is it, what is it like? Is it on the TV? Are you working out? Mm, that's a good um, one. What is your, your uh, routine look like? And, and how do you watch YouTube? Who's your favorite influencers? Anything that you want to hear, uh, share, I'd love to hear about. Okay. What, how do you watch YouTube? Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. I do. I watch it a lot. And I usually watch YouTube while I'm working out and doing my makeup and like getting ready. So that's my, my routine for YouTube watching. And it's always on the iPad. Um, rarely is it on my phone or on the TV, but yes, that's, that's my tradition. Yeah. I would say when I ritual. do, when I do watch YouTube, it is when I am fixing or building something. Yeah, that's <laughs> very true. It's exactly. Or something with our animals because recently our chicken has had some drama and we're trying to um, help her. And so we've been putting her in these baths and <laughs> we had to learn it on YouTube. So thank you YouTube for being yeah. around and like helping us all and giving us all this great content. Um, but that was a good question. Thanks. That was great. All right, we're gonna end it here. And once again, we wanna wish you guys a very happy Easter. Enjoy your time with your friends, family, or if you're celebrating it alone. I hope you guys have a great day with lots of yummy food and uh, candy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.